ringing sound of Jungkook's car shattered the silence of this morning. Yin glanced irritably at her neighbor who seemed oblivious to the rules. It's still early. Yin should be able to enjoy this bright morning peacefully. Does he want to show off? Yin snorted in annoyance. She stepped out of her house gate and marched into her neighbor's house with determined strides. Jungkook, can't you give me a little peace in my morning? Why are you so noisy? Yin approached with hands on her hips, her eyes narrowed, which actually looked quite comical in front of him. Her pretty and petite face seemed completely unsuited for anger. Calm down baby, why are you so angry at me early in the morning? Aren't you afraid of aging quickly? Stop calling me like that Jian Jungkook, I'm not your girlfriend. How amusing, who would want to be the lover of such a nagging, short-tempered woman like you? I might get a heart attack every day. Jungkook smirked teasingly, infuriating Yin to no end. Yin no longer responded to Jungkook. Her face flushed red, she was both angry and embarrassed. Yin stomped away, her footsteps echoing loudly. Take care Yin, the ground might crack if you keep behaving like that. Jungkook continued to tease her, it seemed like making Yin annoyed every day had become his routine. He was delighted to see those tiny lips pout with eyes seemingly popping out of their sockets. Quite amusing. Yin returned to her house and quickly headed to campus by her car. Her mood was thrown off after the encounter with her annoying neighbor. Yin and Jungkook have been neighbors for the past 10 years. Jungkook, who was only 11 years old at the time, saw a little girl peeking over his house's fence for the first time. Curious, Jungkook approached. They then got to know each other well. Little Yin, with her hair tied into braids, managed to catch his attention, who had been mostly quiet and indifferent to his surroundings. Yin's cheerful demeanor made Jungkook enjoy spending time with her. They used to be complimentary friends. Jungkook, the reserved one, and Yin, the talkative one. But somehow, when they entered high school, they grew apart. Jungkook, who already had a girlfriend, seemed to distance himself from her, possibly out of fear of making his girlfriend jealous. Yin, of course, just snorted in annoyance. For her, Jungkook's absence didn't matter, as she herself already had a boyfriend. Both Yin and Jungkook were intelligent individuals. They were exemplary students who made their school proud. Not only in academics, but they also excelled in non-academic fields. Yin was good at mathematics, and Jungkook was skilled in physics. Jungkook was the captain of the school basketball team. Not to be outdone, Yin was also selected as the captain of the girls' basketball team. For three years, they competed to be at the top. Many friends hoped they would become a couple. Both smart, beautiful, and handsome, they would surely be the favorite couple in high school. But unfortunately, they both already had significant others. However, when they entered their second year, their love stories were reported to have ended. Interestingly, they both fell victim to their respective partners' infidelities. It cannot be denied that their year together had provided many beautiful memories. But strangely, neither Jungkook nor Yin seemed to feel much heartache. They appeared to be just fine. After graduating from high school, Yin and Jungkook both applied to the best university in Korea. Yin pursued a degree in pharmacy, while Jungkook pursued civil engineering. I'm so annoyed with Jungkook. Yin started her vending session in the campus cafeteria with her two friends, Yuna and Yuju, who were also their high school classmates. So it's no wonder they know Jungkook well. Jungkook again? What now? You two are neighbors. Can't you get along like normal neighbors? How can I? Every day he just gets on my nerves. I wonder. His parents are so nice, but his behavior is like that. Yin continued to grumble, drinking her beverage roughly. Be careful Yin, don't hate too much or you might end up falling in love. Yuna nodded in agreement with Yuju's words while Yin just snorted in annoyance. What they didn't know was that her heart was actually beating a little faster right now. But she always managed to keep her composure well. But from what I see, Jungkook only behaves annoyingly when he's with you, Yin. Try with someone else. His cold and indifferent demeanor always makes others think twice before talking to him. That's probably because he hates me. You know, my mom even admires him a lot, according to her Jungkook is smart, handsome, and polite. My mom even wants to have a son like him, even though my mom doesn't know about his annoying behavior. You never know, maybe he behaves like that because he wants to get your attention. Yeah, that's right. And it seems like your mom wants Jungkook to be her future son-in-law. As if. Anyway, don't make my mood worse, you guys. The calm pharmacy cafeteria suddenly became lively. Jungkook, along with his two friends Minju and Yunwoo, entered the cafeteria with calm steps. It's no secret that Jungkook is a well-known student on campus. He is also the chairman of the student executive board at the Faculty of Engineering. Everyone knows Jungkook. Many girls have a crush on him, but Jungkook doesn't seem interested in the girls chasing after him. He tends to be cold. 
Jungkook sat at a table not far from Yin. From the moment he entered the cafeteria until he sat down, many pairs of eyes couldn't stop staring at him. But he ignored them. It's too common for him to be the center of attention. Look, how annoying. Why did he bother coming all the way to our cafeteria when the engineering cafeteria is just as good? He probably just wants to show off. Yin narrowed her eyes. Once again she was inexplicably angry seeing Jungkook here. Yuna and Yuju just chuckled, finding their friend's antics amusing. Maybe they just came from the library. That's why they stopped by this cafeteria. You know, the library cafeteria is always crowded and often runs out of food. But Yin, even without trying, many people are already mesmerized by him. Look, he just sits there quietly but still attracts a lot of attention. Why are you defending Jungkook? Do you like him? Yin squinted and looked at Yuju with scrutiny. No no, I'm afraid my friend will get mad if I happen to like him. Who's getting mad? Definitely not me. Yuna smiled teasingly while glancing at Yin, and of course, that made Yin even more irritated. Yin herself is actually quite popular on campus. Many people approach her too, but Yin is not very perceptive, so it's hard to make her understand that she's being loved by many. Besides, Yin hasn't been interested in dating since her relationship ended in high school. Jungkook, isn't Yin over there? Aren't you going to join her? Let it be. I've already annoyed her enough this morning. Jungkook replied with a thin smile. For some reason, talking about Yin always seemed to improve his mood, especially since they just came from the library cafeteria, which ran out of food. Yin is getting prettier day by day, huh? Like this? I might actually fall for her. Jungkook, hearing that immediately gave him a sharp look. Hey, sorry, boss, calm down. Just admit it if you like her. Didn't you guys used to spend time together? That was then. Stop teasing me. There's no way I'd like that talkative girl. Oh, come on, swallow your pride. Watch out for heartache if Yin already has a boyfriend. Jungkook just rolled his eyes lazily. His eyes occasionally glanced at his seat. He noticed what Yin was eating. She might get a stomach ache if she eats that much chili sauce. Jungkook then stood up and bought a white carton of milk. He walked slowly to her table and placed the milk there. Why? Yin looked up at him with a red face from the spiciness. So you can grow taller. Jungkook walked away after saying that. Hey, Jian Jungkook, you're annoying. The spiciness made Yin immediately grab the carton of milk and drink it, causing Yuna and Yuju to smile quietly. Their interaction was truly adorable. Ah, so caring towards your future girlfriend. What? I just don't want her mother to worry and ask me to take her to the hospital because of a stomach ache. Well, her mother can be a bit overprotective at times. She's an only child, her father often travels out of town, so it's understandable that he's a bit protective of her. Yeah, yeah, I believe you. Yoon Woo and Minju chuckled at his attitude. His pride was as high as the sky. Yin's father came home early today. His busy schedule, which knew no bounds, made it difficult for them to find the right moment to talk. But now, there was something very important he needed to discuss with Yin. Yin. Next month your mother and I will be going to France. You know we're planning to establish our fashion business there right? We'll be there for a long time because it will take a lot to set up our branch. At least a year. But it could be longer than that. And I can't bear to be away for so long without your mother. Oh, it's okay dad. There's still maid Sonji to keep me company here. Sweetheart. We'll be there for a long time. We can't rely on maid Sonji and our security guard to look after you. We wouldn't be at peace. You're our only child who can sometimes be so spoiled. You'll surely cry a lot if you're left alone. But mom, I'm grown up now, and if I need company, I can ask Yuju and Yuna to keep me company. You don't need to worry. In truth, Yin was also unsure whether she dared to be left alone without her parents or not. After all, she had never been separated from her parents for too long. No, sweetheart, that would be very troublesome. Mrs. Park glanced at her husband. They nodded. Her husband took a deep breath before telling her their plan, which might surprise Yin. Yin, what about marriage? If you're married, we'll feel much more at ease leaving you because your husband will take care of you. Dad, don't exaggerate. Marriage isn't something easy. Besides, I don't have a prospective husband to marry. You don't need to worry about that. Your mother and I have found a suitable match for you. I'm sure he's a good man who will make you happy. Who? Jian Jungkook, our neighbor. What? Sweetheart. Calm down for a moment. Actually, your father and I have agreed with his parents to arrange a marriage between you two. We believe you're very compatible. He's a good man. Your father and I know him well. Instead of risking you having the wrong person, you know how dangerous people can be nowadays. We want you both to look after each other. So, in fact, you are arranged to be married. It's just accelerated now. But mom. Her mother gently held her hand, reassuring her beautiful daughter. 
Your father and I only want the best for you, dear. Please think about it carefully. But mom, we often argue, and we rarely get along. But you used to be close. So even if you're not in love yet, it will be easier to grow love through familiarity. Remember, sweetie, this is for your own good. Elsewhere, Jungkook's parents also expressed the same thing. But this time, they didn't have to persuade Jungkook to agree to marry Yin, because unexpectedly, Jungkook readily agreed to his parents' plan. Alright, mom and dad, I will marry Yin and I will take good care of her. Even without his parents realizing it, Jungkook smiled faintly with a heart filled with joy. After waiting for two days and with all the persuasion from her parents, Yin finally agrees to marry Jungkook. Alright, but mom, I request that this wedding ceremony be kept simple, not inviting to many people because we're still in college. Actually, it wouldn't be a problem if it's a big celebration, sweetheart. But okay, if you prefer it to be simple, that's fine too. Yuju and Yuna were very surprised when Yin told them that she and Jungkook were getting married, but they couldn't help but scream with joy at the happy news. They laughed at Yin, as if she had been hit by karma for always being angry with Jungkook. Yin just pouted in response to her friend's excitement. The wedding took place three weeks later, considering that the next month Yin's parents would be leaving for France. They wanted everything to be settled here before they departed, so they could leave Yin with peace of mind. The wedding ceremony was held at Yin's house. Yin looked stunning in her flowing white gown. Jungkook couldn't take his eyes off her face. He had to admit that Yin looked very beautiful, but of course, he didn't want to admit it openly to her, lest she become conceited. Wow, a talkative girl like you can also be graceful like this. Don't mock me, Jungkook. Yin, don't be angry. It's our wedding day. You should smile happily. Jungkook said with a smirk, and Yin just gave him an annoyed glance. Husband? Even Yin still couldn't believe that her neighbor could become her husband. Unconsciously, her heart was beating fast. She even had to cup her hands over her chest. What's wrong? Jungkook asked with a hint of worry, seeing Yin suddenly clutching her chest. He didn't want Yin to faint on their wedding day. It's nothing, Jungkook. Don't expect us to do honeymoon-like activities tonight. Like I would want to, you sure? Talkative girl. Jungkook said with a teasing smile, making Yin grit her teeth to hold back her anger. Back when they weren't married yet and Jungkook used to tease her, Yin only felt annoyed. But now, if Jungkook still spoke like that, for some reason, Yin became more sensitive. She didn't just feel irritated. There was a sadness creeping in, making her want to cry right then and there. Am I really that awful? Fine, I'll never engage in intimacy with him for as long as he keeps mocking my appearance. If you think I'm that awful, then why did you agree to this arranged marriage? Jungkook, suddenly hearing Yin say that, froze and looked stunned. Had he made things worse? Yin usually never got offended. But why was she more sensitive now? Eventually, Jungkook just stayed silent, not wanting to cause any more trouble today. According to the agreement, since her parents went to France, temporarily after getting married, Yin and Jungkook will live in Yin's house. Their marriage life was more like merging two people who were at odds, dominated by Yin's anger and Jungkook's relentless teasing. There was not a day without Yin's frustrated shouts. There were no romantic gestures either, even though they slept in the same bedroom. Both of them showed no interest in being affectionate with each other. They kissed only once, on their wedding day. It was a formal kiss that they unconsciously enjoyed. A week into their marriage, Yin suddenly became quiet, unlike her usual chatty self, making Jungkook concerned. Hey, chatterbox, what's wrong with you? What do you mean? Usually your voice can drown out the noise of a market seller. Why are you suddenly so quiet? It's none of your business. Yin slept with her back to him, hugging a pillow tightly. Jungkook became even more confused. He tried hard to figure out the reason behind her strange behavior. Did he do something wrong? As far as Jungkook could remember, he had only teased Yin and made her angry, but then they would reconcile in the morning as if nothing had happened. He started to feel a headache coming on. Yin's behavior was bothering him. He didn't like seeing Yin silent. He preferred her being talkative, which made the atmosphere at home warmer. Before heading to class, Yin parked her car in front of the cafe to buy a cup of hot chocolate. However, as she was about to enter the cafe, her steps halted when she saw Jungkook sitting with another girl inside. They looked very close, and Jungkook even smiled at the girl, a smile that Yin rarely saw in public. Seeing this, Yin decided not to enter the cafe and return to her car, feeling frustrated. 